Hey guys, it is Marianne from Thrive. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can tailor or customize the ribbon in Microsoft Word so that you can find the tools and features that you need and strip away some of the clutter that might be distracting for you. So the first thing to clarify is that today's video has me working in Microsoft Word on the desktop. I'm working on a PC and I am working with the business standard subscription. This should be the same for you, whether you are working in Word or a Mac. If you are on the web version, some of these options may be different because some of the tools and features in the web version are not available, uh, are not the same as those that are on the desktop. So just keep that in mind, uh, depending on which way you're working with things. Also keep in mind that some of the things you'll see on my screen will look a little bit different because things that you may not have worked with or tinkered with before, um, I've been playing with for a while to suit my particular needs. So a good example is the styles. My styles have been modified from the standard Microsoft Word defaults. Uh, so it won't look the same as yours if you've never worked in those before. So Microsoft Word will default to our home tab here on the ribbon. And the ribbon is made up of all of the tabs. And then within each tab, we have a ribbon that is broken into sections or groups with all of the individual commands in them. And there's a lot of stuff in here and you may not use some of it. You may never need an entire tab. You may need something that you can't find easily. And Word gives us the opportunity to customize and tailor what we see to our own experience to suit our own needs. And it's something that people don't realize. They think you kind of just have to work with what it gives you. And that's not the case. So let's jump in to looking at how we can customize the ribbon. So the, the tool or the, the setup feature to do that is from the file tab. So we go file and then we go down to um, options. And then in our Word options that pops up, you'll see there's sort of all the, the standard ones. And then there's this little section here where we can customize the ribbon and customize the quick access toolbar. Now the ribbon is this section here. The quick access toolbar is this little guy up the very top, which has sort of five or six buttons that are the direct actions or commands. But we're gonna talk about the ribbon itself today. So we're gonna go and click here. And what it's going to do is it's going to open up for us what we can do. So this is our ribbon on the right hand side. This is a list of all of the commands and options that we can include. So here is what's available. Here is what's actually in use or set up and active. And you can see here we can work from all of the different, we can work from some different specific tabs. We can work with all commands. There's a few options here and the little info button there is not working today, which is helpful, but typically you would work with all commands. It's a bit, my computer is a bit slow today. There we go. All commands. And you can see that this list is huge. Okay. Genuinely there are, these are all of the potential commands that you can have access to in word. So when we look at customizing the ribbon, you can look at all of your tabs, you can look at your main tabs, or we can drill down to the tool tab. So you can see these are sections and these tool tabs are with the ones that pop up when you're working with something. So the smart art tools would only appear when you're working in smart art. Good example of that is that you'll know if you have a table or an image in Word, there are some extra options. So table design and table layout pop out once you've put a table in. But if you're not clicked into a table, you won't see those at all. So these are those extra tabs that pop up. So I'm going to go with main tabs. And the main tabs are these ones here. So you can see as we're looking at them, we've got home, insert, draw, design, layout, references. You can see they sort of pop all the way along here. So a good example is the developer tab. You may not have the developer tab on and if I go OK to that, you'll see what it's done is it's removed it here. So if I go back to File and Options and customize the ribbon, I always have my Developer tab on. Now within that, I can also um, sometimes, so we can actually 
probably not with the developer tab, but with say view, we can choose which ones we want to have or not have. So if I undo the tabs, they won't appear. I may no longer want these tabs visible. I may not need the mailings one. I might not normally need the mail merge one. So I could take that off and that whole tab will disappear. Likewise, in some of our central ones here, some of these, now these obviously are going to be, um, these are going to be standards and defaults. So there'll be ones here that we really can't remove because they are, if they're blacked out like that, you'll see it takes away the options. If I go to all tabs and we look at say, let's find one where I can actually remove something. You can see here I can click on some of these options and I can click to remove them. So if we were to take, let me take one that I never actually use. So if I was to look at the ink one, I never use the ink tools. So if I was to take this one, I can actually remove just the right section from ink um, and pens and I could leave convert and close. I don't need to have it's not an all or nothing. I can still customize. And then there are other things at the top here. So if we were to go back to, um, let's look at some of those tool tabs. In my smart art design, again, I might decide that I don't actually need the reset graph. I don't need the reset section. I could remove that. I can also move things up and down. So I can move that within that section so that it will look different. And I can then make it work based on if I use two or three of these elements all the time, but I might use the other features occasionally, I can reorder them so that when I look at the sections, so if we were to go as an example, just so you can see it in real, real time, if we go to our home one, you can see these are the sections, clipboard, font, paragraph, styles, editing, Adobe, voice, edit out add-ins and another Adobe option. So any of these, if I decided I don't actually use the clipboard one that often, I could move the clipboard, let's put it down the end. If I go okay, this is reset now. And my clipboard has moved completely to the end. So if I go back, Actually, did it move it to the next section? No, nope. it's just moved it off my screen. So I can go back in now to my options and customize that ribbon. If I go back into home, where did it go? It has gone, it's gone. clipboard I can put it back in so I've clicked I've pushed it too far out it went all the way um, but I can sit it I'm going to sit it after the font section so if we do that do I go too far again am I getting too excited goodness me I did so if I put it after font and go okay there we go you can see it's moved it here so again if this is what I work in all the time it should be either in the center, so it might make sense for my brain to have it directly at the top, or it might make sense for it to be on the left. Again, it's about finding the tools and features that you like to work with and putting them in a place that makes sense for you based on how you work in your document. You can do that with each individual tab. You could go through and have a look at what you use or don't use. If you don't ever touch the draw tab, turn it off. If you don't even change the view or use help or, you know, any of these particular tools, I don't ever touch the arrange section. So we're going to turn it off in here because I would deal with things as my picture tab when it appears. So this gives you the option to play and customize Microsoft Word to suit your needs, not the needs of anybody else. So these settings will be for you because it's set up under your login. Okay, so this will be about your particular needs. Um, 
If you're working on the web, as I said, you may need to check whether you have the same functionality. And if you are working in a school or personal version, again, you may have some limited functionality. But the idea here is that on a, a day to day basis, we want Word to be easy for you to use and make sense to the way you operate and the tools you need are in the most logical place for you. So get in and have a play and see how you go. If you found this video really helpful, then remember to subscribe to be notified of new videos coming from Thrive on Word and all of Microsoft 365. Don't forget to share this with people in your network that you think would benefit from knowing about this particular feature, because the more people who know about it, the more people are going to be able to work with Word in a way that actually helps them get things done. Cheers, guys.